about to start printing here on this one. I'm printing a part here on this one. What the hell? Wait, this is about the whitest of the white I've seen for a filament. Uh, this is the uh, Elegoo Rapid Pet G. So we're printing this part here. We're printing these. These take about almost three hours. And it take about five hours on this bastard. So most of the time it's not worth even printing anything on this thing. Unless I had three more of these printers to print things. It's so slow. Um, yeah, it's just ridiculous. So, I think about, you know, what you really want to be on this one is 50 millimeters a second, really. I mean, like 100 is questionable. You can do it, but I think this one's pretty much in the same realm. Maybe a little bit faster because it's got a 32-bit board in it. A Robin Nano, the MKS, whatever. But this thing is a Sunlu 8-bit uh, Arduino. Like, I think that would be the best thing to do with this is actually change that out. So the direct drive, um, I was going to show you guys something. Hold on. Uh, let me figure out what we did with them. Okay. So we got, we got three benchies. So... This one here was this one cranked up like really, really high, like 250 um, So this was cranked up to 250. And this was normal speed. Completely normal. Um, Actually, I want to say this was possibly 100 because I don't know what the file is set to that's on the flash drive. So it's either 50 or 100. And then uh, this is a warped print on the SE at 180. So what's nice about the uh, SE is it actually does pretty well, but you have to get the, the spool holder off of here because this thing just, it just shakes all over the place. So we made this, a couple of botched up prints, yeah, so the ends um, didn't come out real good. Also. The quality of the print there's supposed to be this little logo in here we can barely see it and if we look at this one here this is really nice so this was printed on that one um, at 50 millimeters a second and the, the key difference was this is printed as um, the, either the Sunlu file but it was used in Cura. So a lot of times normally when I print on this I'm doing a CR10 V3 because that's um, Creality's version of this with a direct drive extruder. So we've flipped this thing around and I mean this thing's always printed really good, like that. At, at, at its recommended speeds, when you slice it, they come out really good. The only issue I was having was in the shop is too much fluctuation in temperature, and some of the prints were, were lifting on one side or another. So, um, anyway, so we're going to print. We've got another one of these. The big thing is we need to print the screw part and these. And they don't come out right on this printer, and I don't, I don't know how to change it. But what happens is you print them, and they're too small. So, um, I'm going to attempt to print them on one of these other ones. I printed one on here earlier today. It didn't turn out real well. It ended up being a huge fiasco. And then my kid broke it. 
we were um, trying to turn the knobs on here and when it was sitting on the floor with just one on there and he stepped on it and snapped it but um, I had yeah five hour five hour four or five hour print on this to print that center section and it um, put all these goofy uh, crap in between here this is really um, a huge hassle so anyway I've got this one here and hopefully it matches close enough that's obviously some other kind of filament this stuff is really 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 bright white it's like a brilliant white like it looks like white lithium grease so um, and I'm going to do that with a orange set of sides it would be like a creamsicle kind of a cool color thing so um, and then I'll print the centerpiece either white or gray or orange or you know whatever it's not like a big deal but I just need a couple of these you know to hold filament I found this design on printables and it all just kind of snaps together so this one here was exclusively printed on that thing and you, know, you really have to like turn this back and forth and clean the threads and turn it back and forth to get them to, to thread and it's just every time I printed anything that has to fit like that on that uh, ender it doesn't fit so I don't know what I need to change but when I would print on this one here stuff like that it would fit great so I'm going to probably give this one the task of printing the center pieces and that part I'm going to print them all on there and see if I have the same problem I'm going to print them slow I'm going to print them at you know 50 60 or 70 uh, millimeters a second or whatever so um, in fact since I've already got it loaded with gray that's what we're going to do we're going to print them gray so anyway I've got this uh, stuff is okay I really like their their red. Their red is awesome, and their their orange is awesome too. Um, these kind of go back and forth in price. They have a, like a really low recommended temperature, 220 plus or minus 10 degrees, and I think it could be a typo because they say their printing speed is 30 to 70 millimeters a second, and that seems a little strange. And then uh, this one says the same thing. Bed temperature, 65, plus or minus. But like, when you look at this one here, it says 30 to 600 millimeters a second. So anyway, and 220 to 260. So I've been using these at about 245 with 70 degree bed temperature. Um, 72 and 240. Another thing I didn't realize, I adjusted my uh, Z offset and I never set it back. Uh, I had it maybe a little too low earlier. So it seems to be printing fine. So, um, yeah, this uh, Ella Goose stuff isn't bad, but it was when I bought it, it was $10 a roll, and you get like a black roll and a white roll, but they don't have that deal anymore. But these ones are back and forth. So anyway, I think these, you know, they look, they look good when they print. The, um, the issue with this is the slicing software. I'm not, I don't have enough layers on my top and bottom, so I need to adjust that setting. And I, I think if you look, the wall is pretty thick because I think I adjusted that. So I'm not really um, exactly digging the Creality uh, slicing software, but um, they're, you know, some of the stuff makes it a little easier. So anyway, anyway, uh, I'll be busy doing this for quite some time. Once this one gets done, I've got to do another one. And then just the little pieces to it. So after that, then I'll probably be like looking for ideas again. A lot of the problem with most of this stuff that I want to print, especially a lot of the ham radio stuff, you know, is like it's going to be like hours and hours and hours 
to print some goofy antenna coil that's on Thingiverse and then come find out it's like completely junk or you know some string winder and you know those aren't as bad on this printer but on one of these ones that's 50 millimeters a second and then you have an error in the middle of the print it's a bad day you know so um, I also uh, just realized that uh, I've just barely been 3d printing for one month one month I believe uh, I started last month on the 11th 12th or the 13th um, I looked it up the other day and I just can't remember but literally a couple days past a month I've been 3D printing, and this is where I'm at now. So, I'm looking at, uh, I sold some radio stuff, I'm looking at possibly either getting a KE version of this, but what I don't like about it is that this uh, is so kind of flimsy, and they only have um, one stepper motor, and then it runs on a timing belt. I don't like that. I, I do not like that at all. I like these ones. And also I like these because they have the supports, but they have two motors. Now, this one uses sensorless homing with the exception of uh, a sensor in here, but there is no uh, Z offset switches. This one has the Z offset switches, or just whatever you want to call it. And then uh, there's a, a sensor in, in here on the deal here instead of in here um, there's numerous ways that they can do this but um, this one has a switch on the back on the Y axis and so does this one this one here could use a little bit of that chain stuff because it's always hanging back there and I don't really have a good way to get it out of the way I have had this particular uh, thing catch on something as the gantry went up. It was caught on the corner of the table it was sitting on and it yanked it out. And that was another problem. But uh, this one's not nearly as bad. I was able to get everything rewired and I zip tied it all together. So, But yeah, one month doing this. This is <laughs> where I'm at. And there's another one of these in the shop. So, um, anyway, catch you guys later.